Hey guys, Adam with AeroWorks and back here in the AeroWorks workshop and we're going to jump a little bit on a new topic here and then we're going to talk about the Viking engine. Uh, it was just a few days ago I was watching a recent video that uh, Jan and Alyssa had put out about their engines. They do a lot of Q&As on their engines, people have questions and it got me thinking, I ordered this engine, it came sometime last year, I don't know the exact date, uh, but I have never started it yet and you know they ship these engines empty, uh, when I mean empty no oil, you know, no antifreeze, all that kind of stuff. So I got me thinking like, hey, this thing should probably get started or at least, you know, should I put oil in it? What should I do? And maybe there's some other guys out there like myself who've ordered their engines. Maybe they're sitting in a crate. Maybe they're on the airplane, but you just haven't started them. So this week I'm making it my goal to get this engine started. Now, a lot of times, uh, you know, we get to a point in the build, maybe we're doing wiring and we're like, well, I can't do this until I mount this and I can't mount that until I do this. And you find yourself going around in circles and that's kind of where I was uh, waiting for some switches, some switch panels to get made. But I talked to Jan, he said, listen, we can get you, we can get you to get this fired up to at least get it tested, get the fluids in there. It's better to sit there uh, with fluids in it after it's run for a few minutes than it is just sit there drip bone dry in, in the shop. So that's our goal this week. I'm gonna get going. We're gonna get this engine going by Friday. So I'm gonna take you around and show you a couple of things that we need to finish up here. So we've got the cooling system laid out one side. I decided to change direction with this. I didn't like it going on such a sharp angle down there. It was near the gear and stuff. So I'm gonna go a little bit more horizontal and I'm gonna put uh, two elbows in here. So this, instead of uh, being angled like this, and going diagonally will actually come straight up and then make another 90 and kind of go through this opening here. That way we'll have a lot more clearance. So I got to re put one more elbow on there and cut another piece of pipe there. Um, I just pushed on some fuel tube here. Of course, I got to put a clamp on there, but I'm just temporarily going to run it through right here down where the rudder uh, control rods go. This again, just a temporary setup to get fuel. We'll run the fuel back and we'll get it hooked up uh, back in the back there where the header tank is. A couple changes I'll be making back here. Um, somebody mentioned the electrical and I did look that up and we don't really want to have electrical leads uh, near or especially over the top of uh, any kind of fuel system. So I will be relocating that strip there. Not a big deal during the test run, but that will be moved to probably a more aft location. But uh, what we'll do is we'll get the fuel line hooked up, we'll go through the high pressure fuel filter, and then directly up to the engine. And that'll get our fuel portion done. Uh, we'll finish up this coolant line here. And then of course we've got to add uh, gear oil in for the uh, crankcase, and, um, or the, excuse me, the reduction drive. And then also I'm gonna add, uh, of course, oil to the engine. Now, when I was uh, mounting the engine and it was still kind of sitting on the pallet, as I was lifting it up and down, I would set it down just to readjust the straps. And I put a little kink down here in this oil filter. So I'm not even gonna mess with this oil filter, even though it's probably fine. I got a brand new one for that. So I'll put a new oil filter on, fill up the engine with the proper amount of oil, put my gear uh, loop oil in there, and then uh, we'll finish up that fuel line. And then all I have to really do is make up my uh, temporary test switch panel which will be right here so that's what we're going to be doing let's get going All right, you can see here I talked about moving that electrical uh, from above the fuel manifold there, this area right here. Move that to the aft, just put a temporary, uh, the high pressure fuel valve, just temporary Clico right here. Got some fuel line extended long, we know. It's just temporary, it's just to get this engine started. And uh, let's move up to the front and take a look at what we did there. All right, so we've got our temporary startup rig all wired up. We got the Fuel pumps wired up, batteries wired up, ignition wired up, and that's all right here. So if this works correctly, we've got battery one and two. We should hear the solenoids pop. 
and battery come on and then we have pumps and then we have alternating which of course doesn't work until you start the engine and then we have our cranking over right here so we're going to give it a whirl you ready to go so battery one that's a good sign battery two that's a good sign we should hear a pump back here but i'm going to turn it right back off okay pump two okay now we're going to crank the engine it's not going to start because we don't have fuel but at least we'll know if it works Okay, so now we're ready for fuel. There's that finished coolant line. And I kept referring to this as the crankcase. This is the gearbox, of course. Gearbox is good, has gear oil in it as seen in the sight picture. Replace that oil filter, got oil in the engine. Everything is looking good on the coolant here. We'll, get, we'll be putting some Adele clamps on here and actually pulling this off and spacing this how we want so this won't be flopping around. Got all the electrical wired up. This is again, temporary wiring only. This is just for engine start, but everything is still high quality wiring, high quality crimps. Everything is figured out here, laid out, properly grounded. Uh, engine ECU landed. Um, and such. So everything there is as per the book. That's all laid out. Engine has fluids. Got fuel into the header tank via this nipple right here. Pump some fuel in there using uh, an old uh, pump I had from the RC days, which was uh, reutilized, cleaned out, and uh, used to pump in about a gallon of fuel in here just to get her going. And uh, let's see where we get from here. Come on, baby. Yeah, there's definitely fuel pressure there. guys well that was pretty awesome we got the Viking 195 turbo finally started uh, on the Xena Super Duty so lots more videos coming guys we took a little time off there with traveling and that but we are doing videos and we are building uh, just because you haven't seen videos we are still working so if you want to see the videos you want to see the progress keep watching the channel if you're interested in the live videos that we used to do we used to do like a Saturday night live video where we'd share the progress and answer questions let us know down in the comments below. Uh, Oshkosh, next week is coming up. We'll be there like Thursday through Saturday. Uh, we'll probably be hanging out at the Viking and the Zenith booth. So if you're around and you see us, come say hi. Also, if you haven't followed along, uh, Dave Telema, who flies Jumbo, the white and orange uh, Zenith Cruiser, he just completed a flight from Texas to Wisconsin, but he hit all 48 lower states. And he did that in about 10 days. He burned zero oil. He's going to have all the stats there. He'll be there talking about his journey and the flight. And um, 
just a really cool combination, the Zenith aircraft and the Viking engine. So till next time guys, Adam with AeroWorks, working on the Super Duty. We'll see you maybe at Oshkosh or we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching guys.